I just left Hollywood, California. Our countries have become sewers. Not only Hollywood, there's San Francisco and New York and other cities, but by and large Hollywood that has filled the land and filled the world with filth. I'm Trevor. I'm Milan. I'm John. I'm Johnny. We are the Escape Club. Tonight, continue with a hot new UK band that's doing great things in Canada. The Escape Club, right after this. Hi, I'm Johnny Cristo. I'm John Holiday. I'm Milan. I'm Trevor Steele. And we're the Escape Club. And have you heard the news? It's good rocking tonight. Welcome here. We're out here with Let's Chat, and we have on Skype today, we have Trevor Steele from the amazing Escape Club. Yeah. I was a, a huge fan. Like, um, Weren't we all? Like, Weren't uh, we all? I have the Wild Wild West album. I was going to show you. On, I have it on vinyl right in front of us right here. Oh, uh, well, I can't see it because I can't see you guys. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah they, he can't see us, but we can see him. You'll have to watch, yeah. the, sh you'll have to watch the show. You'll, you'll see it all. Okay, I will do. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So, um, Excuse me moving around. We, that's fine. Uh, okay, so we're going to get on with some of the questions. Uh, my son here, he's uh, nine. He's, uh, he likes the album, too. Um, trying to get a whole new generation into it. Today yeah. we're recording in the Fact TV studio, which is different for us. This is in Bellows Falls, Vermont. Yeah, and you're in what? The UK? Oh, I'm in London, yeah. London. In my apartment. Yeah. London. Fabulous. <laughs> I love London. I did get to go there once. I got I went to Manchester and Runcorn and London. Right, yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. I've been back here for what? Probably about four years now. I spent the last fifteen years in Australia though, so Yeah. Cool. So uh, we're gonna. My son's gonna ask uh, the first question of the night. This is Presley okay. Payne. This is Presley Payne. You can say it loud because he's gonna okay. hear it. How did you get your? Uh, how did you get your band name? How did you get oh. your band name? <laughs> I've got to be really honest. It's lost in the mists of time. Um, and in all honesty. I think it was it was the best of a, of a bunch that we could all agree on. <laughs> it's the truth of it. <laughs> yeah. and, and of, course, of course, when you're younger and everything, you make up stories about how you got it or anything. Truth is, we all sat around in a room and tried to think of a good name. <laughs> it took about a day. I think I think anybody band has a right to make up five, six different stories about it. You could just pull one out when you're asked. That's right. We used to say that we'd met in a car crash was one of them, you know. But you, you get asked it so many times, you end up, you kind of end up lying, really, or, or, or going over something you said before. So, we, so the truth is, it's just a good name. It works. Yes, it does. And I, I have the album. Uh, actually, my wife bought this for me my, for my birthday because I was telling her about my first ever cassette was the Escape Club, Wild Wild West. Wow. I was playing, a, used to play a Nintendo or Atari At on the floor. seven years old? Seven years old. <laughs> we had the two TVs. Uh, we had a, uh, one was playing MTV constantly, and the other one we were playing video games on. And uh, we, lo I, you know, as a seven-year-old, that video was pretty badass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you never, uh, 
of course, like when you're seven, like, like the sexy leg is like totally different. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was 29, so I, I probably had a different perspective on the whole thing. And uh, I, you know, iconic video now. I think I think of it as, you know, one of the one of the markers. Uh, Why don't you ask a question? Well, one question I had about that is, you know. It, and that time in the in the eighties, if you didn't have a hit on MTV, you basically didn't have a hit in the U.S. anyway. Um, yeah. You think that's the same story now? Oh God, no, not now. I don't think so. I, I mean, on YouTube, obviously, if you get loads of hits on YouTube, that's great. You yeah. know, that's what everyone's aiming for. And I think we were lucky when we did the World West video. Um, because, because this is before technology, so we did it all with mirrors, you know, they were like circus mirrors. Um, and luckily for us, MTV loved it. So I think we can thank MTV for having a number one hit, to be honest. Um, yeah, you, you really needed, back in those days, you really needed a video, didn't you? You really yeah, did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Yeah. And yeah. We, we do another show, and it, that's kind of a throwback to the start of the video age where we actually play music videos and talk about them and introduce them and... Uh, but, a la uh, VJs of the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, the next question is going to come from my son again. Uh, he's, he's got three questions for you today, so we're just going to okay. spread them out a little bit. What do you got, Press? What is your favorite song to play live? What was your favorite to song? Play, oh, to play live. Okay. Um, I'm just rehearsing at the moment. We're rehearsing up for the Lost 80s live um, tour so what's my favorite one i think call it poison at the moment is is my favorite one to play live cool. um but over over the years it changes you know <laughs> it just changes oh, yeah. the feeling oh, tell, yeah. tell us a little bit about the lost 80s live tour well it's it's obviously you can tell by the name it's a bunch of 80s bands out playing together having a good time um and it's kind of a greatest hits tour, so we're only on stage for like four songs. <laughs> so yeah. oh. We have a we have a really cool time though. We really enjoy it, and you know, there's loads of really great bands on. And yeah, it's it's a good party. Really enjoy it. Are cool. you coming to the U.S.? We're coming to the U.S. Unfortunately, we're not coming over your side of the country. Well, we're not. But the tour is. Uh, we're only doing. As far as I remember, we're doing California, Midwest, and Texas. I don't. I'd love to come and do the East Coast, but we're not. We haven't been invited this time. Well, hopefully Too they bad. do. Too bad for us. But Maybe the this West interview. Coasters can check it out. <laughs> Maybe this interview yeah. will change their minds or something. You know. <laughs> no, I think it's because there's so many bands, and we can only do so many weeks anyway because we've we've all got lives to live. <laughs> sort of thing. But yeah. I'd, I'd really like to come out and, and play play over the East because we haven't been out there for quite some time no mm. so, Wait, so you uh, <clears throat> are all the bandmates in the, the london area or are you spread about no we're spread all over um, john the guitarist in, in back in australia and well i used to live back there with him um well not with him <laughs> lived in the same <laughs> country um red the drummers in los angeles and johnny the bass players in london with me at the moment so yeah we're spread all over the globe now, do you have uh, all the original members? Uh, in one of the newer videos, it looked it looked like you had all the originals. Yeah, we no. There's the drummer has changed. That's that's the only difference. Um, yeah. So so Red, an old buddy of ours, is playing drums. We've known him. John and I have known him since we were at school. Yeah. So he's ta he's taken Milan's place. So yeah. So we've got yeah we've got Johnny Cristo on bass, John Oliver on guitar, me me singing and playing guitar, and Red on drums. Sweet. Okay, how do you, uh, here's the next question. How do you reflect on the album Wild Wild West? 31 years old, this uh, being 31 years old this July, uh, after hitting 28 on the charts and it, hit, it had a number one hit song on it. Uh, yeah, you... um, well that album's been very good to me, obviously, because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still doing gigs because of it. Um, how do I reflect on it? I think it was... It was the most fun to record of all the albums we've made. Um, we did it in a little studio in, in London called Maison Rouge with Chris Kimsey. Um, yeah, it was it was a really good time. I learned a lot about production um, working with Chris, seeing how he worked with us. Um, yeah, it was it was just a good, fun musical experience. Great production on that album too. Oh uh, yeah, I think so. He's he's, he's oh, really yeah. good. Is Chris, yeah. And I also heard that you couldn't get no TV play in Britain. 
Uh, and <laughs> because so it was yeah, sexist. Uh, so, uh, well, what was the it problem? Was, it was an anti-sexist. I think it was, beca- it was because we had... Because we had the legs that you mentioned before um, <laughs> on, on the video. And said I sex. Think, yeah, it, it, and I Out think, loud. to be honest, I think it was the promotions guy making excuses for not being able to get it on the TV, yeah. to be really honest. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what really happened. Wow. Uh, now you can ask your question. Here's Presley Where's again. Presley's got Okay, Presley. Where hey. did you, um, where did you re- record the video Wild Wild West? Um, that one we did in London, um, and, and as I said, it was in a studio, and it, we used a load of, because um, the stretching was really hard to do because it was done with mirrors, and the, the director got a whole bunch of ballet dancers in to make all these really strange shapes. Um, so it was really weird to, to do it because we couldn't really see what the end result was going to be, so we just performed while he was doing all this all this stuff. These days, you could just do it with CGI or whatever, but, yeah. but back back in those days, it was, it was quite a technical feat, what, what he did. Yeah, they have, now they, now they have that mirror effect on uh, every editing program now, so <laughs> yes, all you gotta so do is do a mirror image do and do it. <laughs> it's pretty easy now. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Another thing that album and that song does for me uh, I think we're of similar age, and the music. One thing music in general does for me is marks time, you know. So yeah. around that time, you know, that's one of the, the iconic uh, things that say to me, you know, late '80s, late I guess late Reagan and uh, Margaret yeah. Thatcher, and, uh, absolutely all of that, you know. That's people will mention it in an event, and I can't tell you what year it was unless, if they tell me what was number one, I can tell you what year it was or what <laughs> month it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they were really interesting times to live through. Um, yeah, there was a lot to sing about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I liked how you were the, probably the first one to really sing about safe sex on, <laughs> on the song. Yeah. yeah I, I, I remember being really excited because... I think it was in a billboard interview and um, Tina Wayne was asked what's her favorite line of the year and she said give me give me safe sex so yeah I've got, <laughs> wow. I've got, from Tina, I've got approval from Tina Wayne oh, yeah. they should have put great. that on the Trojan boxes <laughs> <laughs> probably would have sold a lot in, in the 80s endorsed by <laughs> uh, when you re- when you uh, wrote the song Wild Wild West like yeah did you ever imagine uh, how much of excess and through the generations it would still continue to be. No, no, of course you don't. When you write a song, yeah. you're just trying to write the next, you're trying to write a hit because that's what you're always trying to do. Um, I think we got an inkling of of how good it could be was when we were in the studio um, because you know how long it is. It's quite a long oh, song yeah. really for a single. It's, it's long because we actually recorded it as a 12 inch because we back in the day you, you obviously edited your 12 inches we figured well let's just play right the way through and, and we'll make a 12 inch and we'll edit down and make the single out of the 12 inch well it was all so good we just kept right. it <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. ed- editor's delight too much good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great yeah. the song that song and that album is really American for a band from UK. I mean, you literally have the flags in the video and everything. Yeah. Was that an intentional? I mean, was that trying to get into the US market h- hardcore, or is it just the way it turned out? Not really. I, I guess we always had a bit of an American sound because of the bands we were listening to at the time, I guess. We used to, um, we, we, we had another album out before that, uh, which was very guitar based. Um, I, I can't tell you. I just think people always said to us, you'll do really well in the States, you sound American. It wasn't intentional. It's just what, what, what this is the noise we made, you know. It, it worked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it did, yeah. Now, when you, uh, you also did a bunch of production, uh, you did like, uh, recorded a bunch. Another band that I think hit number one was uh, Short Stack that yeah, you worked with. that's right. Uh, what, uh, and I see you wrote the song, This Is Back Country. No, I wrote this. So- there's a song I wrote um, with with the guys called Planets, yep. which was their number one song. Um, yeah, I kind of found those guys in Australia when I was living there, and they were a bunch of like high school kids when I found them. And between us, we made them well huge. They were they were headlining at the Opera House before anyone before the media had really heard of them. We just did it all through online. Um, yeah, it was really good fun. Yeah, they were a good band. Yeah, I heard a couple songs by them. 
Um, yeah. So is that what you do uh, now? You're doing production and uh, recording studio, or what is that that you do? Yeah, I kind of do. It's a weird thing because it's so hard to make a living these days <laughs> in our business. <laughs> um, so I, I kind of develop acts. So I, I, I go in. I go in the studio and produce sometimes if I'm asked. Um, but but really, what I try and do is find find a, a band that I really like, or find a couple of guys I like, and, and just try and develop it into something that. That everyone's going to like, you know. Yep. Um, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm curious about um, ha having spent so much time in Australia. Ha you having spent so much time in Australia, but being a Brit, from an American's perspective, I'm curious about what is there a big difference between the UK scene and the Australian scene musically? Or yeah, um, I think um, Australia leans more towards America um, in, in what it's listens listens to on the radio. Um, uh, the the European I suppose the London sound is a thing of its own. Um, there's a lot of British stuff does get across to Australia, but my general feeling there was it, it felt more like America to me. I mean, yeah. obviously Australia's got its own sound. You know, there's some great bands that come out of us anyway, um, but it feels slightly more probably West Coast America to me. Living in Sydney, yeah, that's yeah. I think. Thanks. Yeah. So I uh, you, I heard you opened up for Chuck Berry. And you know, I'm a huge yeah. fan of Chuck Berry, so I was like, what's it like yeah. opening up for such an iconic... Oh, that was the weirdest thing. It was brilliant. It was on a New Year's... It was a New Year's Eve gig in New York. Wow. I can't remember much about it, to be really honest, because it was New Year's <laughs> Eve and we had a few drinks, but it was really good fun, after the show, obviously. Um, I remember going on and we went... It was an amazing gig, went down really well. And the only time I actually saw Chuck was the record company had us all in the in the stairwell after we'd done the gig and they and Chuck was coming down to go on stage. They said, Hey, hey Chuck, do you want to take a picture with the guys? And he took one look at us and went, Nah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, that's too bad. Hard, uh, so on the lines of opening up and uh, headlining, what was your favorite act you played with? Who was your favorite performer you played oh, with? Oh boy. Oh, there's been a few. Um, I'd say back in the UK when we supported the Alarm a lot, um, and we learned a lot of stuff off of off of those guys. They were such a good live band, very underrated, I thought. So they were. I would have said that from everyone we played with, I'd say they were the best live band we played with. What was it again? Um, the Alarm. Alarm. Do you the, guys know them? The Alarm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, we even supported, I remember supporting R.E.M. in a, in a small club in London years and years oh, ago. Glad you could and, help uh, them out. Yeah, it's <laughs> amazing. And I remember, you know, I remember thinking, yeah, these guys are pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> they might sell a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. They've done, they've done pretty well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. kind of. <laughs> so for bands that are out there now, yeah. that, like, that you respect and you think are going to go places of the newer music. Who do you respect the most and for upcoming oh, artists? It's a hard one to answer. Um, you know, I can't answer that. And I'll <laughs> tell you why. Um, because I'm so immersed in production and, and, and developing acts and everything like that, I've become too analytical. So it's I I find it hard to just go to a gig and enjoy it now. Um, yeah. Does that make sense? So when I go to a gig, I'm pulling it apart. And I'm thinking, oh, maybe the drummer's playing a bit out of time, or the singer's a bit. And I can't actually get into. I can't get moved by an act anymore. And it's been a while since something's really. I've gone and seen something and gone, oh my god, that's amazing. You've got to come uh, up here to see some Americana. <laughs> <laughs> some of the stuff. It's, it's weird, man. I, I, I think Imagine Dragons was the last thing I heard and went, oh, my God, that sounds really interesting, you know, because yeah, usually yeah. I've kind of, you get to my age, you've heard it all before, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. This is, yeah. the way you describe that it reminded me of the way I watch movies because I just, yeah, yeah. I'm going to think, well, why did they light it like that? And, you know, they, they had yeah. to be a better take from, than that one and all the rest of it just... Picking it apart, yeah. and that, and that's, that's sad. And I've, I've got a couple of friends who are authors as well, and they say the same thing about reading. It's once you've done it for so long, 
it's almost impossible to just sit and read a book, you know, and yeah. enjoy it. It's sad. It's a, it's a real shame because you can't, you don't, you don't lose the love of music. I love it. It's my life, you know, but I, I can't get carried away with it as much, which is why I, I listen to things like jazz and classical and stuff, stuff that I can't play. <laughs> <You know? And laughs> I, I was curious that. about that. What do, you, uh, what do you generally listen to? I know a lot of rockers that every time you go to their house, there's, you know, jazz in the background. Yeah, or... yeah. I listen to the old bebop stuff. I love Miles Davis and oh, Coltrane yeah. and, you know, oh, yeah. I love all that stuff. I, and I can put it on and it just goes, you know. Oh, yeah. Really, yeah. That's that's my uh, house cleaning music. Uh, yeah, like yeah. That, especially Coltrane. Of course, one of my favorites is Tom Waits. Oh man, yeah. I love Just the voice. Tom. I love yeah. it. Yeah, but we we at Spanky and I we have the same musical taste, which is none at all. Um, I mean, <laughs> which is the same thing as saying everything, you know, is no 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 limits, no boundaries. Yeah, we go to a lot of <coughs> both pretty styles. hardcore Michael Jackson fans too. Oh right, yeah. That's not a good yeah. time to be in a Michael Jackson fan right now. <laughs> no, they they actually they on the, I didn't watch it today, but on the TV in London today, they were they were airing that um, Neverland boot thing uh, documentary. So oh, I'm yeah. quite interested to see what that's all about. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, no. You probably don't get the same news, but yeah, they there's two kids that testified for him in court, and uh, new, they came new out with stories and saying that he bought him wedding rings and oh wow, oh, which. which I don't know. It's it's really hard to believe some stuff, but he was a weird guy. So he, he, he never was a will. weird guy. Yeah, he was exactly. He was a, he was a genius. <laughs> he was oh yeah. A weird guy. I gotta yeah. I gotta give you one of my one of Al's <laughs> standard questions that I will generally ask in every interview of a musician sure. or artist. Uh, imagine you're ten years old and you're in the back of mom's car. Uh, what were you hearing out the radio? When I was ten. <laughs> oh, I was all the hippie stuff. So I was, I was, I was hearing stuff like Cream and Hendrix and and, and late Beatles and all that sort of stuff. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Boy, I can understand this stuff. <laughs> yeah. well, if somebody asked me this the question, it would probably the answer would be very similar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that about wraps us up. Yeah, uh, we're gonna wind it down. But huh? we're gonna play. Uh, we're gonna play a couple of your songs in the end of this uh, clips okay. of both. But uh, really appreciate you guys uh, talking to us today. Well, you. <laughs> Me. Uh, I'm speaking for all of them. That's the yeah. <laughs> but uh, thanks for that. Too. You know this this album, like everything about it, the re the way the recording is on this album, the way you just can crank this album up and the way it sounds, it's just an amazing album. And, yeah, uh, thank you. And we, for those that don't know it, check it out. My son, he's gonna, he listens to it. So, he, you know, it's gonna, I'm gonna pass it on for generations and I'm gonna keep, hopefully, it sticks around. Oh, yeah. That's right. But uh, thank right. you so much for, uh, good luck with us. the Lost 80s Live. Thank you, guys. That was really, really nice to speak to you. Thank nice, you. Nice Thanks talking to you. Doing it. See ya. Bye. Good to chat. See ya. Have a good evening. Bye. So yeah, that was uh, Let's Chat. Uh, we got to interview um, Trevor Steele. Trevor Steele of uh, yeah, if you don't know this Skate music, Club. You check it out. Check out YouTube. You know, it's just it there's is. not really many good videos on them on YouTube. Uh, some of our overuse the word iconic, but it, that's what it is. It's an iconic album. And uh, you know, it's, this is the album, and uh, so it's uh, he's got, got more. They they just taking out with a new one. Uh, 2012, 2014, 2014, they came out. Yeah. So, like, they still rock. Uh, but this, oh, yeah. th that album right here is just definitely my Obviously favorite. Great guy. And yeah, he. It was nice talking to him. We're gonna try to get some other. Now we know the Skype interview works. Yeah. We're gonna, you know, try to get some different bands. Yeah. Not so big that we can't get in touch with them. But well, we'll see. Like, <laughs> uh, I think we're gonna try to get a hold of L7 next. So. Give us luck. Hopefully that works. So, um, thank you for watching. Thanks, Presley. Presley, Bye. Al, Spanky. See you next time. See ya. Happy Mardi Gras. All right, happy Mardi Gras.
never change Some things we'll never know Walking down the rocky road Down and out with so far to go Oh Without you on my mind I'd never make it Without the stars in the sky Well, love is love and one is one So I turn around to head for the sun Now I'm on my way Um, yes, way, it is. It is. I didn't realize that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, you look great. <laughs> we actually, uh, <laughs> Thank well, you. there's going to be like the studio. You're probably going to, you don't see us? No, I don't see you. All right. Well, we'll send you the video as soon as Well, it's then it's done. not a video inter interview for you. It just is for us. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we're going to start out now. Um, I'll have to introduce the show and then we'll start interview asking you questions. Okay, no worries. And, and is this, this isn't live, is it? You just no, it's not live. We're just recording it in the studio. It's kind of like being live, but we're gonna. It'll be just out check. Saturday. It's fake live. Okay. All right. <laughs> give, me, give me the links, of course. Obviously, when. Oh, I, I definitely can, will. I can share them. Yeah, no worries. All right. All right. So.